I was amazed by how bad Liverpool were. Okay, so let's have a look at Virgil van Dijk because I think that he was particularly terrible in the game. So after Forrest have gone 1-0 up, there's a long ball from Sales the keeper, uh, a goal kick, boots it up. Simicast says to Van Dyke, you come and head this away. Van Dyke comes over, lets Jota Silva, who's what, five foot nine, at best, lets him head the ball on, Elanga's clean through. And then when he blasts it over, Virgil Van Dyke's turning around and putting his arms out. Well, well to yourself, mate. I mean, the ball has travelled a long way. If you can't read that flight, there's something going wrong there. How about Nunez at the other end before the goal? Loses the ball so easily, so weak with Milenkovic's challenge. And they go from one end to the other. Brilliant pass from Elanga. Brilliant, brilliant finish from hudson Adoy. But by the way, hudson Adoy cuts in from the left and curls one in with his right. That's what he does. Has Arna Slot not seen him before? Has Conor Bradley not seen him before? Also, the substitution from, from Arna Slot. I'm amazed by it. Right, he's... He's... Put Bradley on, move Trent up, and a minute later, Hudson Odoi's come on. We knew Hudson Odoi was going to come on. He's ripped Bradley to shreds. He's taken him backwards. Okay. By the way, all the Liverpool fans who were saying last season, look at these brilliant kids, they're going to be fantastic. I don't think there's going to be any of them anywhere near the first team for a long time. A lot have been farmed out on loan. So you're getting very excited about those kids. They're not actually as good as you thought they were. Okay. Let's be <laughs> real about true, these things. Me. What are you laughing at? It's true. And I, I want Connor Bradley to do well. He looks like a terrific, looked terrific last season. He but is a terrific player. He, he is a good player. a lesson but, on Saturday. No, but would you have Kwanzaa in there as well? Kwanzaa, would he be starting? I think he's a player. Well, I think I think Kanate's better at the moment. Right, put in for, but, sorry, long term, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's going to be a good Kwanzaa player. Kwanzaa and Van Dijk based on Saturday's performance. Listen, Slot moaned about Forrest being long ball. Uh, in the press conference afterwards. He said Liverpool didn't create chances. He said Liverpool's ball possession wasn't good enough. He uh, he didn't blame the international break. He actually said specifically it was nothing to do with the international break. He said it was specifically it was nothing to do with the lack of energy. He stressed again they didn't use the ball particularly well. I think that's fair. If you don't use the ball well and you dominate possession and get into good areas, we spoke about Spurs and Liverpool was the same against Forest. They got in great areas. Salah had his worst game of the season, mm. who's been terrific and the game changer in a lot of Liverpool's early wins, as he was at Old Trafford. And when he's not quite at it, someone else needs to stand up. You can't always rely on Salah. Now, I think the goal, you're being a bit harsh. I, I think what, when you get a player of hudson Odoi's pace who can go both ways, you sometimes can't stop them going inside, especially when they're outside the box. But you've got to have a central midfielder ready or the centre-half coming up. But normally there should be a midfielder, but it was a breakaway. It was a hell of a goal. But I, I, Brad, Bradley's fine defence. He's got no worries about him. The, the thing with Liverpool is that it, start, it started so brilliantly and we're so used to them dominating at Anfield and turning teams over that when Forrest, little old Forrest turn up, there's this air of complacency that sets in with fans, with pundits and with the players, especially after international break. Now, I know he's not using it as an excuse and he's probably right not to because it's an easy one. But there's got to be some validity in some of the top players. We know how good they are. Some of the best players in Europe, Liverpool have got, coming back from all over the world turning up against Forrest at Anfield and you're not quite at it. It's just human nature. And But what we aren't doing is giving Forrest enough credit for what was a mm. hell of a... I mean, we talk about... And I'm with you. When I saw the team sheet, I, I didn't quite see the game properly because I was doing City. But when hudson Adoy and Alanga are on it, you think, where's the threat going to be? But actually, the way they set up so narrow, so compact, the space so small and playing all those more defensive-minded midfielders stifled Liverpool you know and so I think we have to give them a bit more credit than just saying Liverpool weren't very good because I mean the two centre halves are incredible the full backs oh, well the full backs I mean to yeah. stop Diaz and Salah I've, I've done them in just you're right I mean, Alan said Alan Shearer did a piece on the full backs mm. I think he, he was one on loan one a free I mean yeah. we always question their recruitment but that's not bad unbelievable but so the centre halves as well were ex Milinkovic is a hell yeah. of a signing I mean he's, a, he's an absolute beast and Marillo's a footballer. But aren't we in all of this, and I go back to what we started with Arsenal and Tottenham, four games in, some teams are integrating new players, some teams have got injuries, some managers are new. It's 
four games in and we're making these rash assumptions. Danny, you really have become the voice of reason. Well, I'm and, trying to just and, give... I've, you know what it is, Henry? Because I've worked, especially doing Match of the Day and stuff and doing yeah. this show, and you go and you do a column and you would go on podcasts. Very easy. And I've done it myself. You become over-enthused about a team or or underwhelmed four, ga- four or five games in and then two months later it bites you because you've just been too, too rash. You know, do I think Tottenham are going to compete for the top four? Yes. I think they'll be fine. Are Arsenal going to compete for the title? Yes. <laughs> are Liverpool going to be fighting for the top four? Yeah, I think they are. Be relevant of the change of manager and they haven't signed anyone. But but going from one extreme to saying Liverpool are title contenders to now you thinking he won't last the season. It's like we Okay, okay let me let me you're right and, and I understand why you're saying it. And I think it's all about the wording you use. Yeah. Let me put it into context why you were on the show. I when was, I said yeah. It. You said we it, were asked you to make a bold you prediction. You said it a bit with a bit of humour involved. We were asked to make a bold we prediction. Were, yeah. The bold prediction, which is not really likely to come true, but it's a, it's an out there left field. Well, if that comes true, wow, incredible. And that's exactly the basis on I'm which sorry, I made your that prediction, prediction was he wouldn't last the yeah. season. Yeah, like wouldn't last the season. That was bold, but Henry. I'm it's taking on. what my prediction actually the is the club that stand by managers. My not, my not so bold prediction is that Liverpool, I think, will struggle to adapt to what he wants from what Klopp brought for so many years. And I think that was evident on Saturday because he wants to pass the ball about and control possession. And I think when Liverpool, just say when Liverpool didn't play particularly well mm. under Klopp, on 70 minutes or whatever, he'd basically just say charge. Alimo, and yeah, they, absolutely. And I don't think he's got it in him to do that. And he and wants I think, more control. He yeah, doesn't exactly. want the chaos theory, which mm. which everyone fell in love with like, with under Klopp. But, you know, when Klopp arrived, I'm sorry, I'm with Danny on this one. I mean, I saw some of the headlines yesterday, the honeymoon's over. I mean, the guy's hardly out of the church. <laughs> you know, I mean, just, just, just <laughs> give me, have, haven't even been on honeymoon, you know. It's not doors to manual yet. You know, they're still... <laughs> Literally picking up the confetti on the way to the reception. So look, but they haven't I, played anybody, have they? No, and that's fair. And please don't tell me Man United or somebody. No, 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 no one who you think they can't beat. Exactly yeah, right. I know. So what you mean. I think that's a bit harsh on United. Oh, but, do but don't, come on. But don't you do think it's still a big up. win? It's still a big win. But don't you think it's a bit like I'm of the? You know when people talk about lack of trophies and you're, you're a failure if you don't like Pochettino mm. was a failure in the end because he didn't win any trophies I don't agree with that Southgate's a failure didn't win any yeah, trophies yeah I don't agree I mean it's a bit like the. I mean Arteta won the FA Cup straight away but, but going back to us Arteta is you can see this progression yeah you can see what he's implementing on this side this resilience this athleticism this powerful team that's got this collective that are pushing Man City you can see what he's doing now if Arsenal gets to the semi-final Champions League this year and lose out on the title by a point let's say that's still a brilliant season and a team that's competing at the elite of well, uh, European football. But some people say it's a failure. I don't agree with that. And it's a, it's a bit like what we do. I mean, Liverpool now, this season, under slot, what is failure, what is deemed as failure, what is deemed as success? It's got to be top four. Got to be top four, maybe a trophy. I mean, on my bold statement is they'll win the Champions League because you know what Liverpool like in the Champions League. And, and managing... 20th anniversary. You never know. But I don't think we should be going down a road of there's now a problem because they lost at home to Forest 1-0 and Arnie Slot's going to be gone by the end Can of the year. Can we praise Nuno as well? Yeah. I mean, he just, he got everything right and I, I felt for him a bit and I went to see him last season because I've, I've always liked him ever since he was at Wolves and I did an interview with him and halfway through it he said, it's really important you know how to kill a bird constrictor. Which is you what? tend not to get that with Barry Fry <laughs> and uh, Sean Dyche, and he was just just the island that he grew up on in the Atlantic. They had a problem with boa constrictors, and you had to be taught an early age. Here's my advice: move. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, quickly. Um, and I've got a sort of slight soft spot for him. And obviously, you could see the Forest fans were, you know, very not distraught about Steve Cooper going because they could probably understand it, but they felt a little bit of loyalty towards him. And actually, now they're warming towards Nuno. They mm. like the way they can see the impact. They can see his improving players. They could see that defence. So I completely take your point about but, but, Liverpool. But let's also give some praise to Forest. Do you mm. think for Forest, even if they'd got a draw, right, right, and not one, mm. it's still the way they competed and the progression of going to Liverpool and not rolling over is a progression. Absolutely. And he's so yeah. subs. Diaz hit the post mm. early in the game. So three, six inches, three inches, whatever. If it goes in 1 0 and they end up with a 1 1 or they lose 2 1 or whatever, it, all of a sudden it's expected. Liverpool, great start. Going back to my narrative of the extremes, what we go to earlier. Yeah, yeah. Forest, nearly good, brave effort. You know, need to do a bit more. 
Liverpool flying. And now it, it's moments in games and little details that, that change the narrative. Mm. Instead of looking at this... Perf- I was very fortunate, especially with Julier, who was obsessed about levels of performance. And Gareth's talking about it in England, to be fair, where he's saying, if, if we can keep our performances to a certain level, then we'll be competitive in the tournaments. And I know the last tournament was poor, but Julier was always about not the result, how did we do? How are we moving forward? Because if we're moving forward and keep playing a certain way, the results bit will look after itself. And I think too many fans, and even us in the media now, become obsessed with these results, especially early in the season, instead of looking at what a manager is trying to do. And that's that's the one thing. That my no, theme, that's a great point. That's my theme of the show, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. You know, are, are, what are Tottenham doing? Mm. What are Arsenal doing? Is it... Arsenal made some great signings. Are they going to get better? I think so, because they've got more pl- more great players. Are Tottenham moving forward? I think they're dominating games. I think they're looking like a decent team. You can see what they're trying to do. Now, they're lacking in the final third, but it's... But I'm looking at what Liverpool Whether they are drew doing. at Leicester... Same token, I'm looking at what Liverpool are doing and wondering. And that Luis, Luis Diaz hitting the post came from a terrible pass from Gravenberch that Ryan Yates tried to see out. It was never going out. It was a poor decision from him. Diaz rescues it. So it's not as if Liverpool were carving them open and all of a sudden they've hit the post and probably should have scored. It was a terrible pass and a mistake from Forrest. One thing I would say about Liverpool and the, the Klopp fact, Klopp was, I thought one of Klopp's strengths was how he mixed it up mm. so often. You never quite knew his front. Th- I know that when they had the success mm. of Mane, but after Mane and Salah no, I know what you mean. Firmino. But the last couple of years, they've had this abundance of forward time. You never quite know who's going to play where. On a, you know, Jotson, is he going to be off the left through the middle? Is Gapko going to be here? And the midfield would get mixed up because of so many games. You know, one week you'd see three and then you'd see another two brought in and two off. And the subs were always, you know, it's like, right, changing the front two or front three, a couple of midfit. Klopp, the opposition was always guessing. What's he doing now? Oh, oh here we go. Here's two more coming But up. you know an Arnie Slot team. Is that your point? You, you you know what Arnie Slot's team Well, he's team's played the same be. side for the last three games, I yeah. think, hasn't he? Do you think Chiesa might make a difference? Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? We saw what he did in the Euros, but it was a fear he had that yeah. big injury after that. You'd hope he'd give some competition. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.